Good day, my dear postgraduate students. Welcome after long break for the new year 23. The topic for the day is cryostat. A technical topic, seemingly simple. And I would very much appreciate if you people can identify the intricacies in this topic, thanks to the reference that I am to go. And these are the subheadings under which this topic will be dealt with. So there are a lot of technicalities, some of the adjustments regarding the temperature, etc. And finally, some modalities which are outside our country. And this incidentally happens to be a counterpart of the cryostat, namely the freezing microbial. These two will be dealt with in detail. Added to which there will be a historical background, the applications, the procedure, the pitfalls, and so on. This is the history behind the frozen section. It was designed by one, Louis B. Wilson, whose pictures we are seeing on the screen. This is the advantage of digitalization. Obviously, the picture on the right is not as clear as one on the left. But then, with the digital supremacy, pictures have been made much more clear, thanks to Wikipedia. There was a surgeon, William Mayo, one of the founders of the Mayo Clinic, who had insisted on such a discipline and frozen section was evolved. Also, you find that there is another surgeon, Thomas S. Cullen, at St. Job Hopkins Hospital. And William Welsh experimented the Cullen's procedure. So this is supposed to be the Cullen sign. I'm not going to go into the history of it. It is up to you people to derive some interest. But I'm more interested in the wonderful library that he had set up and having a microscope of his own and the pile of books in his crowded room. More of a gynecologist. He has made a diagnosis of a malignancy, which was to be confirmed rapidly, and hence came the frozen section. So this is the history of it. I would like you people to again go through it. So a lady who is having bleeding per vaginum, and then not much of her history of injury, so on and so forth, and it was diagnosed to be extra uterine pregnancy, which was missed by radiology and then ultimately diagnosed, called the Cullen sign. I'm feeling the heat. That is the heading I had given to this one. On the screen, we are seeing a pair of microtomes. I want to rapidly go through the microtome. So this is a very stable instrument, the Spencer's, and this is the Leica, a modern counterpart of it. This is what I call the fine adjustment. And on the other side, there will be a coarse adjustment as is seen in this picture. There will be a block holder and then a knife holder. There is an adjustment of the various microns that you people need. A very sturdy instrument. And the moment I set five or six microns and I move this adjustment, it moves forward by five microns. Hence the thickness of your sections. 
I would advise you people to kindly go back to my extensive class on microphones. Here, incidentally, apart from the knife, I am also seeing a black colored plate, which is an anti roll plate, an important compound. Now, there is too much of heat over here. And imagine that if the entire instrument is going to be refrigerated, then you call it a cryostat. True strength is delicate. I would like you people to appreciate the words of Louis Nevelson, wherein I'll be finding sections which are too very delicate to handle and then yet cannot be compromised upon. And there should not be damage either to the section or the tissue, nor to the fingers of the technician handling them. Because you find that it has got an extremely sharp blade. It is advised that a sharp blade be used for the microtome that is refrigerated, a cryostat. And it can take up to 20 shapes. Earlier, people used to do some kind of a trimming with a rather relatively blunt blade and then go in for a sharp blade. Whereas here, the author of mine advises a sharp blade for each of the series that is to be diagnosed. And we are spending hundreds of dollars elsewhere. We should not be penny wise and pound foolish in this regard. Not my words, but the authors. A common blade for different specimens is like sleeping with numerous partners. Beautiful words. We all know what will happen if a foreign body enters another block. There are some S's over here. A sharp blade, the safety tip to be followed. And whether you are sitting and standing, there has to be a posture. And these are the other components. I will also be touching upon retrieving a section and a comment on the knife and the block. Look at this one. A superb section that is being cut and it has been drawn by means of it. And it is pinned onto a wooden plank so that I get a straight section out of it. Also, this is the modality of cutting. What this patient or rather the technician is having in his hand is a brush. All the digits of his one hand, probably the left hand, are in action. Whereas the right hand might be moving the microtome in a fine edges. So there is a rest plate over here. And what he says is, it is a very delicate step. You people may not be knowing. But as one hand moves the microtome, as it is moving forward by five or six microns, simultaneously there has to be the other hand at action, which prevents the curling up of the section, which is an important complication or an intervening factor in cryostat. So it straightens it, the other hand cuts it, and I get straight sections out of it. So such is the delicacy of a cryostat. And this is the brush that is being represented over here. There are different qualities of it. I'm not going into the details, but then it will be worth it. This is something like a relay race. So you find that one person runs the race and then hands over the baton or the metal, whatever it is, to the other person so that he has to pick it up and run in the same speed. Anybody drops it, then the relay is lost. So also here, I find that there will be one hand which prevents the curling by using the brush and another hand which rotates and cuts the sections. Two in simultaneous action, a fine tip and hence a relay race is an ample example. There are different freezing techniques. A liquid nitrogen can be 
commonly used. Dry ice is another substance that is used for a freezing microbe. Carbon dioxide gas, aerosol spray, all these we people should be having in mind. But please do remember that the temperature within the cryostat is about minus 10 to minus 35 degrees centigrade. Though further minus temperatures are possible, this is the limitation of the cryostats that we have in our hospitals. What is the misuse of a frozen section? This should have been one of the last slides, but nothing wrong in knowing it early. The frozen sections are being misused by the surgeons to satisfy their own curiosity. They take us to task, put the entire pathology department on their case, get a diagnosis, and by the time you spend all your energy and brain to make a diagnosis, the surgery is forced. Which means it is more out of curiosity than a necessity. And to compensate that deficiency for the lack of anatomical knowledge of the structures. A very strong statement, but probably it is. The third one is to immediately communicate the results of the surgery to the patient's attenders or relatives and gain a political mileage over it. So such is the misuse of the frozen section. And these are certain things that we people will be following. And there are certain fine tips over here. Let us see whether I will be able to explain to you people better in the form of pictures. The thickness of the sections, it can vary from as low as 3 microns to as much as 10 microns. This will be depending on the nature of the tissue, what it is meant for the finer details which are needed and how much of damage that could be prevented. All this should be borne in mind and it is an absolute judgment of the technician and the pathologist. See these artifacts over here. It is not uncommon for us to see such cracks within the section. This, they say, can be because of the hardness of the tissue or the bluntness of the knife, or the force with which it is being cut. Normally, the force with which it is being turned has to penetrate through the entire section so that there is no crack also. Moreover, remember that we are using a frozen section, which means the water in the tissue is getting frozen, and so we find that there will be such things visible. But sometimes it can be very fine and sometimes too very obvious. There is also compression of the adjoining tissue. So this can be an interference, particularly when you are going to look for a malignancy or so. Better explain grossly. I find that this is called a shatter. So there is not only a compression. I am able to see the multiple lines, but then probably there has been a nick in the blade. All these have been explained in the microtome also, and it cuts the entire section. I'm able to see the dots. Or sometimes the section itself can be torn to pieces, which means it can be obvious, or it can be subtle as in this case, or still more subtle as in this. It looks almost normal, but if you go, if you go near and see, you will be able to find lines of compression over here. All these will have to be taken care of. I know you are postgraduate students, it might be difficult, but then such is the nicety that we should be bearing in mind. Quality assurance. Never two cases in the same grossing area. Sometimes we might be having, but then never panic. It is your domain and you are the ruler. There has to be a system of identifying the block, numbering, and Never two cases in the same cryostat. If at all there are many, as in a cancer hospital, let there be so many cryostats and so many technicians, as well as pathologists, if need. 
and never take unlabeled slides. So you can add this quality assurance if you do get this as a question. And kindly go back to this reference. It is worth reading, worth its weight in gold. And Stephen Peters, he can be adored for all the niceties and the innovative steps that he has mentioned in the prior step. This is one of the major references of my presentation. Always when there is fat, we find it difficult. Even the technician is alarmed because it is looking very soft, yet very difficult to print. So in such a case, we will have to orient the fat, differentiate it, mark it, and so on. And whenever you do cut it, the fat has to be first. And finally, the parent fat. And look at this one. This is maybe a breast tumor or so. There is a definite solid tumor over here surrounded by the breast and fat. So what happens is this will be creating an artifact. This has to be cut through so that you arrive at it. And then finally, it is done. So it is over here. This is the anti-roll plate that I had mentioned. The brush is in action. And obviously, the knife is yet to come down. So the knife is over here. And once there is a rotation, you people will be able to see the sections being cut. All will have to be acting simultaneously. We always say that sections must be thin. But look at this one. This is a thin section, but so much of cracks, etc. particularly if it happens to be a fatty tissue. So in which case he advises even 8 to 10 microns can be tolerated in which I will be able to appreciate the adipocytes with peripheral nuclei evacuated cytoplasm. So obviously you people can decide which of the two is better. Also you find that there is something called as a drying artifact. There should not be much of a time from the removal at surgery to the processing in the cryostat. There has to be a rapid fixation in ethanol. So there has been a fixation in this particular case which has been failed in this. So you can very well appreciate the differences. So this is a drying artifact caused by the delay. What are the limitations of a cryostat or rather a frozen section? One is time. You will have to come up with the right answer. You cannot make mistakes. And you will have to have the confidence and the rapport of your colleagues, the department, and the administration. Excellent experience of the pathologist as well as the technician are needed. And always have the patient in mind. Throw other things to the wind. Do not yield to the pressure of it. And don't go by the radiology or other findings because you are the pathologist who is going to give the final diagnosis. And when there are multiple cases, it is your role to fix the order of it. And cutting the corners of the specimen is not advised. These are certain fine things. Ask for help if it is needed. And tell your surgical colleagues the limitations. For example, ganglion cells in Hirschsprung's disease. Not very much advice. These can be some of the limitations in a frozen section. Whereas there are others also. Limiting special stains. You cannot do an ISC obviously in a frozen section. And diagnosis such as lymphoma, sarcomas, etc. cannot be made in a cryostat. There are many mimics in histopathology and giving a diagnosis can sometimes land us in trouble. Maybe the future can have more rapid remedies over here. But right now, these are some of the limitations. Lack of consultation. It is better that we have a good set of reference books and avoid the net. In a larger institute, colleagues can help us out. External consultation, it is more of a luxury. We talk of telepathology and so on. But whether it can be applied in a frozen section is a million dollar question. Artifacts, as I had mentioned. 
So you find, instead of going through all these words, look at these two pictures. Both are from the kidney and you will very well appreciate. So in this one, there is more of a fixation and a near regular processing, whereas this is a cryostat. And so you can see the artifactual differences. It can be because of the ice crystals or it can be the freezing. And always you find that the ice is more voluminous than water. So there is an expansion. And it is not uncommon that we have certain things like the stapler pins and so on. These will have to be removed and borne in mind even during the microtomy. And this is one of the fine things. We will have to look for the hyperchromaticity of the nuclei and the cell borders and so on. This is rather good enough, but not as good as a routine section. These are the parts of the cryostat which you people show. As I had mentioned, the microtome is within and it is a refrigerator. I find that there is a, what to say, a plate over here, which has got the various digits, such as the temperature, etc. light on and off. And you find that there can be also an external manual for a compass. There will be the other things such as a quick free stage, etc. All can be monitored from outside. And as I mentioned, this is the fine adjustment. On the other side, there should be a coarse adjustment. But sometimes it is being automatized by means of these buttons in better microphones and better cryostats, ultraviolet light for us, etc. And remember, this is a closed lid. There has to be a temperature that has to be maintained. And it is better that the process goes on. It will be visible because there is only a glass plane that is covering. So it need not be opened every time and then closed, losing the temperature. That can be the nitrous oxide and the other substances which are present over here, which will give the low temperature. So the nitrogen or the helium. Helium is nowadays not being used for the frozen section. Thin section will have to be get and there is something called as a gel matrix, which helps the tissue get stuck to the holder. Now, what are the purposes of a frozen section? One is a quick diagnosis. Patient on the table, you give the diagnosis. Studying the margins of a cancer. Sentinel node. So when the sentinel node is going to be positive, there is no point in going through the other nodes. Obviously, they may be positive. So that has to be taken care of and a blocked section has to be done. To study the enzyme histochemistry, it is not immunohistochemistry, enzyme histochemistry, which can be lost during routine processing. Detection of lipids and molecular procedures can be done. Fluorescent microscopy, direct or immunofluorescence. And for impregnation methods also, this has been I would like you people to kindly memorize this particular list. Not for ganglion cells, but sometimes for the identification of the parathyroid, etc. in a thyroid surgery. And look at this one. Again, go through the one. There is a fine adjustment over here, and this is the cooling agent, and this is the transparent slab over here. These are the buttons by which it can be adjusted the distant forward, etc. That will be the monitor for the temperature, etc. All this can be seen. And the embedding media, it will be either a drop of water or sucrose itself. There can be other commercial embedding media which can be used. All of them will be helping in rapid freezing. Sometimes carbon dioxide snow is used for this freezing microphone. And liquid nitrogen, as I had mentioned earlier. This is the thickness, etc., that we have already mentioned. And the time limit can be about 10 to 15 minutes. And it can be much less in the hands of an experienced technician and a pathologist alike. This is a temperature chart, which I would like you people to kindly very much follow. For example, the spleen, what is the temperature? Liver, what is the temperature? And accordingly, you people can 
give the necessary instructions for the adjustments. Recommended temperature chart. It's a good chart to be just at least referring to. So this is an important one. This is called the quick freeze stage. You find that there will be multiple tissue block holders which are there. So in this place, you find that there will be the freezing. You apply the aerosol over here and then the tissue is kept, it gets attached and automatically with the low temperature, there is a freezing and that itself provides the necessary support of an embedding. And the block is just removed, it is kept to the block holder over here and this is the microtome. This entire step is actually the microtome which we are seeing outside but then it is being refrigerated. So the knife is over here, then the block holder, it moves up and down, just like your rotary microphone. Sometimes why the tissue falls off. Such intricacies he has described in his article, I would like you people to kindly go to it. Even if you are going to present a seminar on this, this will be a splendid article to refer to. It can be because of dry tissue, very large surface. Sometimes we are greedy enough to give a large tissue, concentrated agent such as a bluing in ammonia. Then instead of using 95%, ethyl alcohol 100% is being used. And when there is too much of overlap between the media, it will not be consistent. There can be a falling of the tissue. This list is important, not for you as students, but then imagine the amount of intricacies that has been studied by the pathologist in this article. This is something being used because always you need a flat surface. Once you give it there, this is being compressed upon so that a flat surface is being used. And with that, I'll be able to, when I cut a section, I get an entire surface of the media that I had been given. Don't think that the bit that you are given is even. So beautiful picture again, you find that the various things, there is something called, these are all the axes that can be controlled. So that will be there. These adjustments we are not supposed to do with the knife is over there. All that has to be done earlier and before the tissue block comes close to the knife. There is a X axis and a Y axis, all will have to be adjusted. So that this block of tissue is exactly parallel to the surface of the knife. So that is called orientation of the knife. And this, my friends, this is the anti-roll plate that we have got. Finally, once the section is being cut, it is subject to staining. And the staining recipe is the choice of the pathologist and the technician. So there is a series of it that is being done. Finally, it is being cleared, it is mounted, and the section is ready in about five to 10 minutes. So there's a spray that is being there for the freezing of it. And there's a compressor that is used to make a uniform surface of it. Look at the tissue, it almost becomes ironed out and then later on it is being subject to cutting. So efficiency of the machine can be, that. these are from the Leica literature and you people can go to it if required. There is another instrument called the ultra microtome that is used for fine cutting, maybe Electron microscopy is another area where this is being needed. And in electron microscopy, you find that it will be cut. There will not be much of a stain. And finally, the picture has to be monitored. It will be captured onto a computer. And finally, it can be either the transmission or the scanning electron microscopy that can be giving us a diagnosis. All the provisions are there for the ultra microscopy. This is the earlier counterpart or the age-old friend called the freezing microtome. Nowadays, the freezing microtome is more of a historical anecdote. So this is the block holder. And in order to bring about a low temperature, something like a carbon dioxide gas, or you find that nitrogen can be used. And the moment the gas is over here, the tissue is there, it freezes. And then it becomes solidified enough to get stuck to the block and it is being cut. And where is the knife in this case? Look at this one. This is a block you people are seeing over here 
and this is the knife. In a freezing microtome, the knife comes over the block of tissue in an arc-like manner. In an arc-like manner, it cuts. You will not be able to get serial sections in this. But then there will be thin sections and those days it has given the diagnosis thanks to Alan Lee. But one problem is since it comes in an arc-like manner, there can be a little curvature that is given to the section, which should be borne in mind. And look at the plate over here. This is the earlier one. So there is a knife which is moving in an arc-like manner. There is a block holder. There is a tube. That is a provision for the gas, which causes the freezing over here. Remember, no serial sections, only individual sections. The advantages are again rapid diagnosis, non-dehydrated tissue, fresh tissue can be used again for a rapid histological diagnosis, the demonstration of the enzymes as well as the fat and neurological structures which might be damaged during protein tissue processing or a longer time is taken. The disadvantages are complete defrosting of the machine is required. Those days we will have to require the request form much earlier so that the machine is being switched on. The entire room has to receive that particular temperature. The fixation is quite slow. It cannot be used on previously fixed tissues such as in formalin. And it is confined to a particular temperature. Modifications are not that easy. The morphology is less accurate, not as good as the protein processing. Pigments can be formed and being an open procedure, there can be irritation to the hands, to the nose, etc. This is a, one of the first pictures that I had shown earlier. The description of it is over here. The knife is not there, but then the other components have been given. It is worth going through the antiquities of this picture. And this gives a list of the differences between the freezing microtome and the cryostat. I would appreciate you people to kindly write down this table and find out what are all the differences. So what is the gas that is being used? In a cryostat, it is going to be helium or nitrogen, whereas it is carbon dioxide that has been used. What is the temperature and then this? This is minus 150 degrees. It has been combated or not agreed upon by the Leica and the other ones, but it has been mentioned in literature. Kindly go through the controversies. This is a kind of a summary. So this is the mission of the freezing microtome. All the parts are given over here. You can go through it. So these are the indicators. And you have the fine adjustment over here, about 5 to 6 micron that you said. And the same as the microtome, you find it has got a mode of cutting. These will be the block folders. And this entire stage is called the quick freeze stage. And this is the brush, which is more important. Your left hand will be holding the brush, preventing the curling. And the right hand will be cutting the sections. So the quality has to be maintained. The take home message is definite diagnosis is not possible in all cases. So the limitations must be appraised to the surgeon. Make him a little more knowledgeable. So the misuse should be avoided and it does not substitute the routine processing. Something, a VIP case. So immediately they want a diagnosis. Please pathologists do not be eager to give an early diagnosis. I feel that a delayed diagnosis is better than a wrong diagnosis. And superb art of it. This is a conclusion. One must know what excellence looks like and sounds like in order to begin to approximate it. You will not be able to come near the perfect excellence and you should be aware of the mistakes and they should be aware of actually what is happening. That is very much needed. Unless you have a knowledge of the entire limitations and the utilities, it will not be good. This is a superb article and remember it is not an art, it is a sketch that has been made on the cryostat tissue block itself. So hats off to Stephen Peters and I think the entire credit of this presentation goes to you. You people can download this article and read it. Thank you for your patient listening.